It's three years since the den, and Deborah is back in the centre of London to visit Ian. We can see you again. And you. When Ian came into the den, he had an automated DJ dance music system that we were going to sell through a music download site. He didn't have any licences to actually sell that music, so you have to negotiate with EMI or Sony, whoever it is, to actually play their music. So that's what they did. Two years ago, Ian, Theo and Deborah met the major labels to seal licensing agreements. Oh, good to see you again. Oh, good to see you. How are you doing well? Yeah, nice to see you. You're admiring all the gold discs. Look at this. There's probably some remixes off them out somewhere. Some new ones. When we started, we were going after a different market completely. It was the, uh, the dance downloads to consumers. And, you know, with, with piracy and all that, it didn't really hit its mark. With many consumers choosing to access music illegally, Ian's paper download site suffered. So we needed to find a different angle and niche because we still knew we had something. With the added pressure of £150,000 of Dragon investment, Ian knew he had to find a new outlet for his technology. So he stepped out of the dance music scene and into a whole new professional market. There was a lot of email from an aerobics instructor saying that this would be fantastic. If you just make a few tweaks to it, then we could use this um, to create music for our classes. made a few tweaks and then the next thing was we, we introduced this to uh, a company over in the States, the largest fitness music provider. They got on a plane, came over, um, signed us up and the uh, rest is history. So this is it, these guys are actually using our music? That's it, they've, they've been on the site and they've chosen the tracks they want um, and selected the speed that they want for this class. Uh, they've then downloaded it and uh, they're playing it on their iPod. Ian may now have found a market, but are the Dragons going to see any return on their investment? Where we are now, we're turning over annualised, uh, coming up to 500,000. And you know, that's a huge amount of that, is thanks to this, this fitness side of it. So it, it really did transform the balance sheet, really. And not only has their target market changed, but so has their business model. It turns out that our best success has come from licensing licensing out, which I think Richard may have mentioned as his, his idea. And yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. I'm just so pleased that it's worked out this way. Licensing often means you get quite a small proportion of a very large sum of money, but actually we are genuinely partnering with people because they can't do it without us. So we've got 25% of the UK market? We have, we have. 75% to go for. Let's get the rest. Absolutely. Thanks, Good Ian. Great day. Bye -bye. Good to see you. Okay. Guys? Few entrepreneurs enter the den and walk away with investment. But how can you improve your chances of gaining Dragon cash? And what should you avoid? There's only one mistake that keeps propping up. I'd put him in that bin, right? <laughs> I'd shut the I'd lid down too. and I'd wheel him out. Again. Just listen to me, I'm getting really annoyed now. And again. He asked you a very fair question. You know, you should have an answer to that question. And again, the den, and that is people not doing their homework. Stop it! You ask for far too much money for far too little. I think people who've got no idea about how to value their business. So how do you get from selling £1,600 worth of merchandise and valuing a business at £1.7 million? I find difficult to deal with. You put a very, very high valuation on your company. What's guaranteed to lose my investment is somebody just asking for a crazy amount of money for a small percentage. Very PC have come here today to ask you for £250,000 for 5% of the firm. There's no point in me having a business with only 5%. It's just absolutely completely crazy. Might as well buy 5%. Marks and Spencer's in the stock exchange. We're crazy. Um, and anybody who I just thought like... <laughs> get out of here! You Go are... away! Some of them do get a real, real pasting. If you don't get your numbers right, if you make a few mistakes, what happens if only 100 people turn up to each event? Are you saying you're going to get a theatre for free for a week? No, you would have to pay. Pay what? But it's whichever is higher, the 30% of the profit. Oh. Do you see what I mean? No, I don't. It's... I think it's very woolly, actually. And that actually sends a good message to everybody in business. You've got to prepare. You've got to go your numbers. You've got to do your research. That's business life.
Next, the tour heads north out of the city centre into suburban Chessent, the distribution base for a grandmother, an importer and an interior designer who joined forces to face the dragons. In 2008, the business partners entered the den hoping their DIY product would secure them £40,000 for a 15% share in their company. Hello, my name is Janice Dalton. I'm a director of Blinds in a Box. These are my co-directors, Simeon Salik and Dominic Lawrence. Our product is instant temporary paper blinds that require no tools for fixing. Peel off the strip and you simply stick. And we provide two clips for each blind. When the team from Blinds in a Box walk through the door, I was a bit surprised because you've got an unusual trio. So I was kind of working out, how do they all fit together, really? The dynamics of the trio may have intrigued the dragon, but James Kahn was keen to find out more about the company's distribution deals. Just talk me through the journey that you've gone through to try and get it into retail stores. We have taken it to... Um a major um, department store. Okay, how many totally, how many retailers have you pitched? One. We've only pitched, We've pitched this to one. one. They're very interested. Well, to be honest with you, you know, for me to make an investment with three people who've got a great product and the best you've done in five months is made one pitch does not inspire me. I appreciate that, but it is a decision we've strategically made to approach one and we've... That's an appalling strategic decision. Our decision was to go to one person at a time because we wanted to start the whole business very slowly. We didn't want to rush in and regret what we'd done. We didn't want to run before we could walk. Unfortunately for Simeon and her colleagues, three of the dragons didn't share her opinion and had heard enough. I'm sorry guys, I do think it's a good idea, but no chance. Sorry guys, Thank you very much. I'm out. A million homes buying this. I can't, I don't even think 10% of the caravans in this country would have them. And that's why I'm out. Thank you. I'm afraid I'm, I'm not investing, so I'm out. I was delighted when Theo Pease from Deborah went out really quickly because it just left the landscape wide open for me. It was the best strategy that I could have hoped for. I've just been sitting here because I do get to the concept. The whole basis of success here is your ability to market this, which you clearly have not been able to demonstrate. I can imagine walking into B&Q, seeing this, and thinking, 20 quid, I can do a whole house up. So I think that providing you're comfortable, that we can sell it at a price that sells, um, I think I would be, I would like to make you an offer. And the offer I'm going to make you is for the whole amount, so £40,000, uh, but I'd want 50%. A crafty James Kahn wanted three times more equity than the trio were originally offering. But one other dragon was still left in. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make you an offer. I'm going to offer you £20,000 for 25% if James will share it with me. I made an offer because it was pretty clear we could sell that product through the same avenue that we sell at least two of our other products. It was a pleasant surprise to see the Scotsman following me when I made the offer because he didn't appear to be that interested, but yet again, when James Khan made an offer, there's always a dragon who's going to follow suit. 50% is a lot more than we asked for. Well, would you be prepared to go down a little bit because it, you know, there are three of us, it ends up that we don't own very, own very much of our own company. What I would be interested in doing is saying, we'd like 50%, however, if you deliver the numbers that you've said, I would be happy to come down to 40%. Okay. Are you comfortable with that, Duncan? Yeah. Yes, happy with that. we're, happy, we're with happy with that. We're that. happy with that. Yes. Happy, we got ourselves a deal. I 
think the nerve-wracking thing is when you have to decide whether you're going to go ahead with it. And um, it's quite a big decision to make, and the three of us had a little chat, I think, and we decided that we were here, we wouldn't get another opportunity like this. We got two terrific guys who liked our product.